You know the song simple will say, and the storm is over. Hallelujah. Jesus is here. One more time. We're coming and declaring right now. Say, oh, and the storm is over. Hallelujah. Can you lift up your voice right now and declare that with faith in your heart? Jesus is here right now. Please, you live also. Every storm is over in your life. Salaman Amrone Salama. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. Jesus some more, come on, we can do better than that. Appreciate the gift of God in the life of our brother, Mr. James Well. Were you blessed by that ministration? Were you blessed by that ministration? Somebody say hallelujah. The storm is over. It is done in Jesus' name. Celebrate him one more time, please. Uh, by the way, that is, that is one of his original compositions. Can you celebrate him again, please? He wrote that song. You believe that? Boy, I can lay claim to you that I wrote, I wrote the, the last part. Celebrate me too now. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Uh, we are about to go into the, you know, one of the most powerful sessions that we usually have at Alive. So please, don't be in haste to leave. Uh, it's always a wonderful time. But before we go into that particular session of, interact uh, of interaction, I beg your pardon, uh, I'd like to acknowledge and um, introduce some of our ministers. I didn't do that earlier, it was intentional, because I didn't want to you know, drag things because of time. Uh, by the grace of God and the privilege of heaven, we have in our midst minister, Emmanuel. He was the one that brought us the word of God. Can you please help me celebrate him? Come on, better than that. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much for being a blessing. We celebrate you. We appreciate the gift of God in you. May the Lord make the ministry in your hands prosper in Jesus' name. And also we have uh, in this house this morning, uh, this evening, I beg your pardon. Maybe sometimes someone will be having a laugh in the morning. <laughs> we have a brother that has been you know, very good to us. He's a friend of the ministry and uh, he's someone I respect so much. He is also here with us this time around. I'm talking about another person than Minister Paul Allison. Come on now. If you have ever been blessed under his administration, can you celebrate Jesus better than that? Thank you so much for coming, sir. He's a songwriter, he's a music director, uh, and he's a teacher of the Word of God. And this evening we are going to be enjoying, you know, grace through him. Also, we have one of the leading, permit me to say that, I say that with all sense of uh, no, humility and confidence one of the leading ministers in this city and then I've known him since about uh, year 2002 that's uh, over 20 years now he, I was just telling somebody okay it was I am pastor I was talking yesterday you know and I told him I said, ah, Papa in this alone <laughs> you don't tell you know many of us know him as Papa you some know him as T.Y. Kiss. You know, some don't even know his real name. You know, by the reason of the grace of God upon his life, he's a worship leader, he's a music producer, he's a songwriter, he's a coach, he's a lot of things. He's a minister by the grace of God. Please help me celebrate Minister Tayo Olawepo. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. God bless you. We appreciate you. He's a very busy man, so to be here, uh, we don't take it for granted, sir. Thank you so much for being here. 
And also, there is a friend and a brother. People say we are twins. I don't know where they get that impression from. And he has been with us since day one. If you saw the you know, photo college that I did some days ago about Alive 2016, you know, he was there. By the way, this is the ninth Alive to the glory of God. By next year, we'll be having the 10th anniversary of Alive uh, Worship Conference. So this man of God has been with us from the beginning. And uh, when this edition of, you know, when this dimension of the conference started in 2018, you know, we've been having him every year to anchor this next session. And I'm tempted to name it after him. Just name it, you know, Pastor Timmy's session. <laughs> Not just interactive session. Because he has been the one, even when we had a virtual edition, he was still the one. We gathered online during the lockdown. We couldn't have it live. He was still the one. So he has been a, he has been of a tremendous blessing to us at Alive. Help me celebrate Pastor Timilein. Ajakwano. He is the resident pastor of the Throne of Love Christian Center. Thank you so much for coming, sir. We love you. We celebrate you. And of course, we have uh, the servant of God, a prophet in the making. He is a prayer warrior. I'm not talking about people that you know pray you know, in vain or people that love to pray, you know. Uh, what do they call them? Contract uh, prayer warrior. No, he's a prayer minister. He's a servant of God, very humble. He's a friend, and he has been of a tremendous blessings. I believe that during that session, you have been blessed, right? Please help me with the grace of God in your life. Celebrate the gift of God and Prophet Israel Wealth. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. We we'll bless you. Thank you for supporting us. Uh, it's a lot. Beyond what you are saying, there's you know, a print of Prophet Israel here tonight, and Believe me, God has used him for us. Thank you so much, sir. We celebrate you. And of course, uh, I have a tree you know, behind me. I don't know how to put it you know, word for word. <laughs> but permit me to use thought for thought. Uh, I bless God for the day I met this man uh, over, 20, no, over 10 years ago now, about 12 years ago. And uh, I always give glory to God. He has been a firm believer and a firm supporter, you know, of this calling that you are benefiting from today. And if not for people like him, many of us, not just me, you know, would have been frustrated, probably out of the ministry in this city of Ilori. Please, I know what I'm saying. It's one of the reasons why we are still standing. On Tuesday or Wednesday, I made a post on Facebook, or WhatsApp especially, telling the story, you know, how it has been since 2016, the times that I thought of giving up. Believe me when I tell you, this man is one of the reasons why we are still here. The Lord has used him so much to be of a blessing to us. He is the one, you know, that the Lord is using to encourage us. And I'm talking about no other person than the senior pastor of the throne of Love Christian Center. He is my father. He is a worshiper. He is a teacher of the word of God. He is no other person than pastor... I'm telling you to say pastor and minister. <laughs> because my pastor is now on another level. So, Pastor Okweyemi Lawa. <laughs> Celebrate him, please. Thank you so much, sir, for always allowing us. Thank you for the gift of God. We celebrate you. We love you. Please let me tell him, say, Pastor, we love you. Tell him, say, Pastor, God bless you. Please, his wife is here. <laughs> Wave your hands now. Come on. Hallelujah. We celebrate you, man. God bless you. Thank you for, uh, for being a blessing to us. Amen. Please, you can have your seat. Uh, permit me to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Taiwo. I'm surprised when I saw him. Because the last, last information I had was that he's no longer in Ilorin. That he has been transferred out of Ilorin. I don't know whether he has been transferred back to Ilorin. Or he came purposely because of our life. But I can tell you, that is how much he loved the ministry and he loved this program. I can't tell ex exactly, but... If I can remember very well, I've been seeing him at our life consistently every year since 2019. Believe me, you. I remember last year after that powerful interactive session, you know, God gave him a word for us. Okay, two years ago. He didn't hold back. He came forward and he shared it with us. Thank you for always being a firm believer and a supporter. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Come on now. If you love him, say a better amen. amen. And also, I made a new friend in the you know, last few months. And I'm surprised when she walked in. I'm talking about Sister Lizzie. I'm sure she's surprised I'm mentioning things myself. Thank you so much for coming. Please let me celebrate her. God bless you. You are welcome in Jesus' name. All right. Uh, going forward now, 
there is something very special that I want us to do tonight, but not now, probably after the interactive session, so that we can move with speed. It is very, very important. I will be very grateful if you can stay till the end of this meeting. The next one hour, the other will be done, or less. Uh, please help me welcome Pastor Timmy Ajakbono as he comes to usher us into the next session. Also, keep clapping your hands, please. To follow him is Minister Paul Allison. Please, can you clap some more? And to follow him is no other person, uh, Minister Tayo Olawipo, as we enjoy uh, this next interactive session. Come on, clap now, so that pastor can move with grace. Papa, rather. <laughs> Anyways, he's a pastor too. God bless you, sir. Uh, before I leave the stage, uh, please help me to celebrate you know, our longtime drummer, Minister Kolade. Please help me celebrate him. I don't want to forget. Please stand up for recognition. I won't lie to you, I miss Kolade. I was just telling myself during some check this afternoon that I can't tell anybody, but yeah, I'm saying it openly. I miss Kolade. I won't, I won't lie to you. I miss Kolade. He's not playing because I think you are traveling tomorrow, right? Tomorrow morning. So that's why he's not playing. And then uh, we, by the grace of God, among those that he has imparted, Ezekiel, is, uh, no, he has been a blessing. Please celebrate Ezekiel too. I will continue with the rest after this session. God bless you. Hallelujah. Let me ask a question. How many of us are ready for our life 2024? Permit me to stand because we are about to give God some ovation right now. And it's very wrong for me to be sitting right there. Can we just rise to our feet and celebrate the God that is alive? You are not doing it. Yeah, we actually, one of, the, one of our priority, especially for this session, is actually to, to do uh, good with time. But even if we have to spend the next two minutes here, we we'll celebrate God for the next one minute. Please, can we do that? Can we do that? Can I have the musicians here? Yeah, come on, come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's, you know, Jesus told them, is there any house you enter and they don't celebrate your God? Is there live there? Is there live there? Don't, don't, don't spare it. Just, just live there. So I'm not comfortable anywhere where my God is not well celebrated. The Buddhists, they are celebrating their God and in a better way than these. Come on, come on. The, the, the Muslims, they are celebrating their God better than these. How many of us are serving an authentic God? If you are serving an authentic God, come on, just let's have a mighty roll in the house, everybody. Under the sound of my voice, you are coming up. It is a life, a life program is meant only for people who are alive. Can we make it a shout? Make it a noise? Make it a clap? Make it a jump? Make it a, until I ask you to stop? Don't let anything stop you. Don't let any stereotype stop you. Come on, come on, you're still coming up. I mean it when I say it. When I see people celebrating my God the way they're supposed to. I know it because I can see it. Come on, celebrate my God. The Bible says he died. He died, he died. And on the third day, he rose again. Come on, present a God, present a deity that can do that. May you took up for that. Shatoke the Alkaya. Amen. Thank you. Amen. You may need to just, just be around. Can we have a seat, my guest and everyone, please? Once again, I welcome everybody to this year edition. How many of us were glad uh, when Pastor Bio mentioned that this is the ninth edition of our live conference? How many are uh, alive? Yeah, just alive. I think the conference started just a few uh, years ago. It has been 2018. Thank you. How many of us were glad? When, at the hearing of that. How many of us were, were, were glad hearing that? I was so glad. I was so glad. And please, permit me. Can we celebrate the host of this awesome moment? <laughs> By the grace of God, the reason we all gather here, can we celebrate my friend, my brother, a co-worker in his vineyard, Pastor Adebayo Adeleke. Come on, come on. Now, this is what you are celebrating. You are not just celebrating him. You are celebrating a live conference. You are celebrating nine years of uh, tenacity, of huge sacrifice. Uh, and above all, you are celebrating nine years of the goodness of the Lord. Come on, come on, do it better. Amen. God bless you, sir. We can have our seat. If you have ever had reason to gather 20 people, you understand what I'm talking about better. Yes, you, you, you can see anything. Anybody can 
You know, it's, it's now the time of social media. Any, any fool can post anything once they have data on the social media. But ask them to go and gather people. Then they will understand. Amen. <laughs> Just by the way. And uh, as been introduced earlier, I have... Uh, let me start from my right ear. It's not it's with no other preference. Yeah. <laughs> Emoji. But I have a friend of about two decades now. Almost, yeah. <laughs> If, if, if people don't really know uh, that we are very good friends. Uh, we, we connect on, on several, you know, uh, occasions, issues, matters, uh, amen, uh, ranging from music generally, worship, ministry, and politics, <laughs> politics, business. We, we connect on the very land, uh, landscape, yes, sir. And the only way we have not been connecting, and I pray that, you know, something is cooking very soon, is on family matters, Amen. Amen. But he's actually receiving an impartation on, on, on the stage uh, in this year, you know, having two uh, married, he's a senior married man, don't mind him, uh, two married men on the, <laughs> definitely shampoo iron. I love that. So, so impartation is ongoing already. Please celebrate Minister Paul Allison. He's a songwriter par excellence. Not just, I call him songwriting apostle. Is if you want to learn songwriting, just come and these are the people with the problem we're having in the body of Christ that we don't celebrate our own. Me, I can vouch for this one. He's a songwriting apostle. He's a song, not just gospel musical. I think he, he gave me an assignment very, very recently. I could, I, I checked it. I said, ah, I, I can't see me. You cannot do this. <laughs> just, just, I just respect, respected myself. You know, <laughs> amen, <laughs> amen. And also to my left ear. Ah, everyone say, Papa, you. Ah, that's, that's it, oh. Hmm. If, you, if you know, you know. Uh, yeah, I've known him for, I've known him for decades now. Yeah, for, for about two, 20 years or so. Yeah, and God has been helping him. He's like uh, one of his statements about, I may, may not even remember that, about 18 years ago. Rank will ja. Your rank will not ja. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, so let's move straight into the business. Right now, we've been dealing with a few uh, numbers of uh, issues, matters arising uh, around church music, around worship ministry, and, uh, and what have we. And I just uh, believe that God will be helping us this evening in this particular session and also granting us grace to actually, an utterance as well, to actually deal with some of these issues with, uh, with the help of God. And trust me, it has been real in the Holy Ghost. We, we will try as much as possible to be real. And one of the reasons I'm saying it is that if you have any questions that uh, maybe, you know, uh, owing from things that, uh, that they've said uh, up here, uh, because uh, I trust the grace of God upon their life, both, uh, you may just turn it down and just beckon on one of the, the ushers. They get it across to, to us here. And if you have any contribution as well, uh, within the frame of time that God will be granting us grace to actually be here. Uh, is that alright by us? Ah, this is not my audience though, for a live conference. Is that alright by us? Okay, I'm getting more vibes from here. Is that alright by us? Alright, so I need to also respond. Uh, and I pray that we have a very good time in God's presence. In the name of Jesus. So let's start from here. You've been hearing worship. Now, many of us have heard about anything like the style of worship. I'm a music minister. I'm a worship leader. I mean, this song is a worship song. And this song is, this song is not a worship song and all of those uh, things. So let's start from the foundation. And I'm going to start from my left ear. Uh, I'm sorry. Can, am I permitted to call you Papa? Because that's what we, we always stick from my tongue. <laughs> Amen. Okay, so, Papa, is worship a genre? Please, can we power this mic? Please. Please celebrate our, our amiable men, strong men at the media. I'm just saying that it's the light that didn't allow me to see you. Uh, please celebrate them more. Celebrate them more. Hallelujah. Please, you can. I think it has come up. Okay. Okay, please. Can you? Okay. So, the question is, is worship a genre of music? 
if you Google it, you won't find worship under you won't find worship under the generals of Mary's. So, you can find ballad, you can find pop, you can find reggae, you can find uh, R&B and all of that. But what makes worship from the from the definition or how we can explain worship is deep reference. It's like a reference to God. So any song that expresses our worship, that expresses our surrenderness to God, that expresses our reference to God in totality, like honoring God is a worship song. Even it can be a fast song. So that means it's the content of the song that tells us whether the song is a worship song or is a prayer song or is a song of mercy or any kind of song. Hello. All right. So uh, I'm still coming back to you because this is a foundation. So I may need to get some, uh, if just a few clarification from what you've just said now. And uh, it means that um, uh, if I sing songs like. Uh, is a worship song, right? Okay. There are two ways to look at this thing. Okay. In church, once we say worship, it means the slow songs. <laughs> okay. That now, is the general now belief. Now we are coming there gradually. You understand? So, in the general belief is any song that is the worship, we give you glory, Lord. That's a worship song. But what I'm trying to say is there are other songs that are as, as slow as that that are not actually worship songs. Very so, correct. Uh -huh. I agree, I agree. Because if I we agree. are saying, Idemi ja, Alleluia, Odelia, <laughs> no matter how where is, the, where is the worship there? So, that's not a worship song. Okay. Same way you can have a worship song you are singing on a fast tempo. That's what I'm trying to that's why that, That's why I said that. It's more of the content. Hmm. You understand? I give example of, we give you glory, and we worship you. We bow down and worship you. So this one is reference to God. Honoring God for who he is. Rather than talking about uh, needs and other things. Okay. Uh, please can we celebrate Papa? <laughs> now you now need to celebrate him more. Because of what I'm about to bring out from what he just said. Uh, please celebrate him more. <laughs> so, um, but before, I, before we get there. <clears throat> so... Do you have any opinion contrary to, because this is the foundation, I mean, it to actually harvest. Okay. Um, Absolutely not. That total agreement. Uh, Lord, you are good and your mercy and your, we worship you. As fast as it can be. Hallelujah, we worship But what did you say? You said we worship you. So, um, worship is not um, a style of music. Come on, come on, please. Because Are we noting this? Worship is not a style of music. Because in the first place, you can worship without music. Ah. So worship is actually... So wait first, wait. <laughs> let's, let's drink water first. Mm. Did that sink? We are not acting drama here. Deaf and don't worship uh, no, 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 no. And I, I was tempted, you know, you know, I, <laughs> I didn't want to come to him, you know, because he's a table shaker naturally. <laughs> so before we get so deep into shaking those tables, um, and we're still coming back to some of these things, all right? Do we all agree that worship is not a style of music? Yeah. We all agree. So we can move on in this, right? Okay. So my next question, or the next question we have right here. Now, what are the common stereotypes we have around, uh, I, I want to classify it, the common stereotypes we have around modern day worship, and I'm coming to you, sir, Minister Paul. Can you, uh, so, that, so that I don't, can you, can you 
narrow, can you narrow down a little bit so that I don't go okay. Um, okay, going by what a stereotype, you know, means, for instance, just for, I don't want to put words in your mouth because I, I can be also be very opinionated because worship to me is not just an activity, it's a body. So I don't want to I, I, I don't want to drag everybody to my own opinion. But let me just give a classical example. Uh, there is a way that people expect if you call yourself a pastor, that God has called you to be a pastor, there is there is an expectation the way you must look, how you must talk. I'm not just talking about what the Bible says and what the Bible does yeah, not yeah, say. Yeah. I'm talking about what the what are the stereotypes? The what do people expect? A worship to be now now going by that question in modern day, day worship how do we even see worship what what are the stereotypes around it okay praise god hallelujah um, that's uh, that one is a heavy one um well i'll just say people have um, a lot of expectations vary let me start with that uh, but one of the things I've noticed is that in this age and time, for example, there are what we call trends. Okay. Uh, there are some trends that uh, people believe if you are worshipping, uh, these things are uh, compulsorily supposed to actually be part of your worship. For example, chants and uh, blasting in tongues and uh, things like that. Uh, people nowadays uh, strongly actually expect that. They expect these soaking sessions and, you know, the heavy string, um, they call it string, uh, it's actually pads, the heavy pads under, you know, the music and everything. Uh, generally, I think we live in a time and age when a lot of people uh, kind of, when you say worship session, those are kind of the common denominators that people have come to actually expect uh, in this age and time. I, whether it is wrong, wrong or right, well, we are not going to, I'm not going to go into that, but I just feel I should mention. Okay, so talking about expect, you've talked about expectation now. So how do we now reconcile that? Because if that is the, you know, leading worship is actually leading the people to worship God. If we all agree that um, worship is not a music style on its own, standing alone, that you can worship even them and deaf and dumb do worship. Now, if we are not, if we are doing anything that is uh, not what the expectation of the people are concerning worship, how do you think it would affect the worship? Well, um, there are two sides to it. Okay, sir. Um, if you're going to lead a congregation in worship, uh, it's important that you kind of carry them along to be a part of it. So, uh, there's the part of uh, having um, a kind of knowledge of the congregation you want to lead. Perfect. And so that you can actually pull them along. Uh, but while you're doing that, you, we also um, actually have to think of the other side to remember that even the audience are actually participants in the worship. The, um, they are actually not the audience. They're actually participants. There's only one audience. Come on, come on, come on. Day. I hear that, sir. I at the end of the day. So as much as you actually want to pull the people along, you also want to make sure that at the end of the day, you are not doing a disservice to the person that you are That is the audience. That the, is actually the object and the audience of your worship. Please, Please can we celebrate? Uh, I wanted to, I'm tempted to say Apostle Paul now. Apostle Paul is an apostle of songwriting. Amen. Um, let's go for, for that from here. Or oh, you have an opinion on that? That's not. Okay. All right. So... Um, well, I, do, I, I want to call it set list, right? You know what a set list is and just having uh, some, you know what a set list is now before. Ah, is it necessary or what are the motivating factor, Papa, to have set list in worship? Set list, you mean like a song list? Exactly, of yeah. I would say it differs from person to person. Let me add from places to places too. <laughs> okay. For me, I use song list. For me. 
Okay. If I'm leading worship next week, it can take me six weeks to finish that song list. Reason is because I don't just want to pick songs because they sound good or because that's the Jim Jim part. I want it to be inspired by the Spirit of come God. On, I don't want come on, come on, come on, come on. Because there are many songs. There are many songs. Today now we've done more than how many songs. There are many songs. But I want to be sure that that is what God is saying at that time. Because if Please, you can are, we celebrate Papa here if now? You are, it's not about... The last program I went to, I went with 13 songs. I ended on seven. So, is so, and uh, all the songs. In fact, the last song I got it that after. So, for me, I would say it's good for you to take time, just like a preacher will always meditate, read mm. and meditate before they come for the delivery. Same way, but that does not mean that uh, at the at the time of your ministration, God cannot bring you a song. That is possible. Exactly. And it works like that. Exactly. Fact, but I feel you should still prepare some. Yeah. You should still prepare some. Because you need to... There's a way you build up the song. You don't want to bring a song that you should be a starting song mm -hmm. and put it at the end. Now climax. Uh -huh. So, So it should be like you are building up, you are building up, you are rather than just going up, mm. then we come down, mm. going up, and come mm. down. And when you don't know what to say again, you start speaking in tongues. We don't, don't worry, worry, we are still coming to that. Okay. We, are, we, are, we, are, we are still coming to that. We are still, oh <laughs> God, don't tempt. But because you mentioned it. Okay, so what, what does, uh, now you talked about being inspired while putting together your song list, your, your set list. And the reason I added the other time that it's not just differ from person to person, it also differs from places to places. For instance, if you are running a ministry in U.S. now, any part of the U.S., you know, in that climb, you don't, you don't come on, on the altar, on any of the worship meeting, on any of you know, any spiritual gathering, and okay, we want to sing, you now say, I'm, I'm doing spontaneous worship understand that the musicians will be looking at you okay when you are done with what you you will get the people that will play for you you know, understand so these things also differ from oh, places. places to places yeah, so yeah, right. now how does my, my our understanding of song list does it in any way betray the understanding of uh, spontaneous worship Can you prepare your song list and at the same time be spontaneous? What is even the idea of having a spontaneous worship? <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Okay. Let him talk first. <laughs> <laughs> Over to you, sir. <laughs> uh, um, please, sorry. Are we learning, please? Yes, sir. I, I don't think uh, one necessarily uh, affects the other. Uh, I don't think one necessarily affects the other. Uh, James, I'll start like this, will say, show me your faith without works. I'll show you mine That's right. with works. Uh, if we're actually going to do this thing right, I mean, if you're going to sing before the president, will you go without planning? Mm. Mm. Will you go without planning? Mm. And you're talking about the president or presidents. Come on, come on. So, uh, there should definitely be some level, a good level of planning, but since it's spiritual business we do, uh, we also have to understand that uh, in moments um, of leading worship, uh, God might decide to actually take a detour from your plan. And uh, it does not necessarily um, con have to conflict, let me put it that way, with uh, whatever you planned. Uh, at the end of the day, whatever you're doing is actually supposed to please God. Exactly, so, exactly. Uh, so if he says take a detour in the middle of what you're doing, in fact, sometimes 
Uh, I think it was Dunsin's uh, Facebook I was reading. Oh, go, go, Ale. It, it came on the spot, right? Yep. That, that particular song actually came out. They had recorded um, this other song that he did with uh, Theophilus. Yep. Ah, 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 ah yep. you are worthy. Then somehow, somehow, in the middle of all of that, that song, now, uh, it, that, that is openness. Mm. But it didn't necessarily mean that they were not organized. Exactly. So I believe both can actually coexist together and um, one doesn't necessarily need to uh, destroy the other. Yes, uh, uh, to agree with what you said and to just push it further because um, right where we are now, if this is the only thing we could discuss and everybody goes on, I think it's, it's, it's okay. Now, I think my own, now, my own opinion and I would like you to, by your response, fine-tune it. I think one of the major problems we're having is lack of creativity, basically. Because I had, um, I still have an experience very, okay, Color Day is here, can, okay, I think, was, was it with Color Day or maybe with Tigor? I went with a team of, uh, of guys for administration, a music administration, uh, so to say. And before leaving, uh, I, I don't, even if I have to take over from maybe choir or maybe to lead a pastor in worship uh, before the sermon, I had never collected the mic without having a list in my head. I may get to the altar and everything changes. You understand? But I would never, so let alone going for such, and Lord, the Lord told me very strangely, he said when you get there, you will need to make use of the talking drum for worship. So going by what Papa said, <laughs> okay, so that was you. That, worship is not a star. It's not a style of music. And I said, talking drum, how far? You know, I was trying to, you know, get some style that fit into that. So I prepared my list and I briefed the, the music team. That this is how we are going. When we got there, I think we went with Minister Emmanuel. When we got there, I saw what, what actually gets them, you know, into, okay, talking drum. And we got it. Now, one, I'm mentioning names so that, you know, they can be a witness. What actually shocked me is because the kind of rend rendering that the Holy Spirit rendered that atmosphere with talking drum. I'm, when I mean by talking, I'm not just talking about percussion. I'm talking about Lujo. You understand? With talking drum, I was shocked. Me, myself, I was shocked. You understand? So, I didn't mean that... And that does, like what you said now, that did, does not betray, that didn't betray my set list. You understand? Now, how does creativity, what role does creativity come to play in actually harmonizing your set list with spontaneous worship? As a worship leader, now we are talking about worship leaders now. Uh, a lot, a whole lot. Uh... Moving away from plan hmm. can be tricky. Yes, sir. can be very tricky. And uh, if you don't know your onions well, uh, you, you can easily get into trouble. Hmm. Uh, a change of song might require a change of key. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what do you do? You, take me to A. Meet me. Remember, meet, me at... <laughs> meet me on A. What do you do? when uh, you need to make a switch and you probably need to change keys and uh, you don't even understand how C works with A or B works with E flat and stuff. Uh, so uh, creativity actually is very, very important. Uh, number two, uh, even when it comes to rhythms, it, it, you know, there, there's a whole lot of things at play uh, and you have to actually have um, some level of craftsmanship to be able to uh, navigate navigate around it so uh, creativity is actually very very important it gives you what I call options mm. uh, it broadens your options one of the things I've learned is that uh, there is so much that God can do, do through us but our own language this, the, the language the creative language we are equipped with mm. will actually put a peg on what God can do come on come on, uh, come on. That's powerful. God is not likely to put you know, I'm on stage and I'm ministering. God is not likely to give me, a, uh, give me a direction to sing a song on parallel minor when I don't even know what it is. Mm. It has to be a tool I have first. Exactly. When, it, when it's a tool I have, it now, uh, I, it, it now becomes something that um, 
it when God instructs, I can use. Exactly. Uh, God is not going to take me into battle with a rifle that is not tested. Come basically. On, come Praise on. God. Can we celebrate uh, Pastor Paul? <laughs> wow. Now, my own take home from this particular discussion, this conversation, uh, if you want to be a music minister, a worship leader, an excellent one at it, and someone who, is, who will be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit every time, please sharpen your skill. Be more creative. Be, be more creative. There's a place of prayer. We are still coming to all of that. There's a place of, you know, deep spirituality, not just religion, not just jumping around. I mean, deep spirituality, the honest one, the sincere one. But if you must... Now, sir, Victor Lorenzi is a very professional... Is he violinist or violinist? Don't say you can. If you had known him in the Lauren, you know he's... Is it? <laughs> I don't know anybody that plays bass for Don't Sing that is as half as good as Don't Sing on Yekon. Now, Nathaniel Bassey, Pastor Nat, is a, is a principality in, in trumpet. Not just gospel trumpet. I mean, you can have jazz, all manners of, and he has played with professionals. So, these guys that you sell, we celebrate, please let's let, don't don't just don't just lend their was asha. Uh -huh. Don't just lend yeah, 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 yeah. No, please go and learn where they are coming from, so that we can grow. Are we are we gaining wisdom? God bless us in Jesus' name. Let's move on very real quick. All right. So uh, I'm still coming back to you, sir. Uh, church administration and building a strong and effective worship culture. Now, there's a worship culture. There's something called worship culture. Now, what is the role of church administration in building a very strong and effective one, sir? First, I think uh, right teaching. Right teaching, yeah. okay. Uh, second, I think uh, laying some kind of examples uh, by the leadership uh, themselves. Uh, I don't know if I should say this. But I, I, Please feel free. Feel free. It kind of rubs me wrongly um, when church leaders are not uh, present for worship sessions. Uh, I, I feel like uh, that kind of opens the door for a lot of people to see um, worship as necessary evil. Can we just bypass this part and get to the main part, uh, basically? So uh, I feel like uh, the church ad administration actually has uh, a big role to play in shaping, in teaching, in um, laying examples uh, for the rest of the church, a template that the church... A template, right. Yeah. Please celebrate, celebrate, uh, Minister Paul. <laughs> Sir, he, he talked so, uh, uh, just in passing, about setting a template for... Uh, the, the people when it comes to you know worship now can you just uh, in a bit of way articulate what are the kind of templates being your music minister you you have been a music director for and you've served under under you know you know men that understand both music and the the church administration especially in this city of Elorin what would what are the things you would say that of course, we have pastors and we have people that even God is calling into the work of ministry. What are the kind of templates church leaders supposed to set to actually make worship culture more effective, especially in our generation? Okay. For church leaders. Yes, sir. I think the leader of the church is perception about worship we affect the congregation perfect you please understand? we can celebrate him for that because if the leader is someone that is given to worship the person will prioritize worship and everything that has to do with worship in his church because it's what you give the give more attention to that's what exactly people, that's what the people will pick from you a, even a leader of a church must be a worshiper himself exactly must be able to raise songs of worship and the same thing flows into the choristers 
they must be worship leaders, they understand the they understand worship in terms of the songs, the choice of songs, how instruments harmonizes mm -hmm. the worship because you can have people not understanding worship, even musicians not understanding worship, they <laughs> tend to play something that does not correlate with worship. And they get more frustrated if you point there. Yeah. <laughs> so, worship is not a time to express everything you know. It's not a time to, to give an impression that I'm better off than the other person. Mm -hmm. So, if it's actually coming from your heart, it's, it's, it's an expression of your own worship. Exactly. So, exactly. it's not uh, an opportunity to drop the court I just learned. It's <laughs> just, I worship this time. Please, can we celebrate Papa? That was deep. And bring it from, now, let's talk about the practical things you, uh, you would suggest that a church, every church leader now, now this is general. Every church leader should prioritize to actually make uh, this thing called worship culture more effective in our various local assembly. Sound. Sound. Okay, I add a very loud yes, I hate that. <laughs> Sound, okay, we're in it. Reason is because no matter how anointed you are, once the sound is bad, your delivery will be bad. <laughs> <laughs> so by sound you mean sound is by is sound you mean sound equipment sound equipment one microphone the yeah. instrument everything mm. then the technical know-how mm. I would say singers should be skillful in singing musicians should be skillful in playing so what is your, uh, we, we are building this up. You know, we have a climax and I'm watching the time. Uh, do you think that in making this worship culture more effective, do you, how, what do you, um, how do you see this? That a typical choir should not be made of people that are not well auditioned before joining. What will you say to that? Ah, okay. You know church, I don't know. There are churches, there are churches. There are churches that just believe that uh, once you are high doing church, join the choir. Just be useful in the choir. God wants to use your voice. But <laughs> I think there are churches now that actually take auditions. Important. I belong to a sorry, church. Sorry, sorry. Let me, Let me go. I will need to cut you there. <laughs> okay. I, I won't allow you to put me into trouble. <laughs> Amen. By the grace of God, I'm a resident pastor. So, okay. <laughs> I have first time. Now, but uh, not just on a lighter mode. Uh, are you trying to say that if we don't prioritize auditioning people before joining the choir, a typical church choir, they will not be effective? I'm not putting words into your mouth. I'm just, I just want to get clarification. And you may actually need, you may want to diplomatically dodge that. And I will understand. <laughs> the truth is, if you just allow everybody, because they are hiding in church, just say, join the choir, without the skill, or let me say, the, without the talent. The talent? Because you can have the talent, and over time, you develop the skill. Yes, yes. Skillful. You will not, the choir will not be effective. Hmm. See, people that are musically inclined and people that are talented. There's a way they think. Exactly. I belong to a church. I will not mention the name of the, you know. But I'm the leader of my choir. I have people in my choir. They are not really music people. They are just there by volunteer. The stress they will be giving you. This problem they will be giving. Things that does not matter. That's the issues that does not concern the main thing. That's what they capitalize E.G. E.G. Wardrobe. Wardrobe. <laughs> that's, that's their problem. And that's they can, what they will Amen. They can take one hour out of three. Speaking about that. 
when they are learning the song, they might be pressing their phone. They are on Facebook. Hi. But when it's time for other things that does not really matter. And they expect a magic. They will not know the part they want to be on the microphone. <laughs> you don't know the part. You don't know the part. But there are six. They will just be bringing issues. So to avoid all those things. Because even sometimes, the time you even spend to do the main thing, and the time you use to set up I'm waiting for your recommendation. <laughs> I want you to land there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll continue, sir. The time you use to set up chorus and things like that is even more than the time you Boy use for the actual... Boyfriends are girlfriends uh, issues. Other things. So, for me, I would say for effectiveness in the okay. point, <clears throat> pick people that are talented, mm. that are skillful, that will make the work easier. Imagine if you have five singers, they understand notes, they can score some. You will come to the other in 30 minutes we are done. But there are people you will teach the part now, in five minutes. It's off their memory. They, they is gone. He's gone. He's gone. Gone, gone. <laughs> they, and they want to lead worship. And they will they be offended to, if, if you are not giving them mic. They are the kind of people I mentioned earlier that when they don't know what they want to say again, they will speak in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, on today, uh, today's day, 28th of um, March, 2024, by Minister Olatayo <laughs> Olawipo, I'm going to use the first recommended on their live conference I'm called by, no, I'm not, I'm not there, in case it's going online. <laughs> I'm not there. That if you don't audition people who are talented and they have genuine interest, can I add that, in music, in singing, you know, generally, please, don't recruit them in the choir. Amen. I'm not the one that said Sorry, it. let me just add okay. one okay. more thing. All right. Now, if you recruit good people, yes, it will attract good people. Come on! I hear that, sir. I hear that, sir. But if you allow rubbish, that, sir. you just bring everybody. People that are really skillful to be part of, they won't want to join. They won't want to join. Mm, mm. Please, you can have... Uh, I think um, one of the reasons why we've had these issues over time is uh, we grew up in a country for a long time where... Uh, okay, let me, let me put it like this. There was a time uh, I, myself and my parents were, you know arguing school matters. So, my mom reported me to a family friend. So, he called me. I didn't know he wanted to actually talk to me about school. And when we were talking, because at that time, I actually wanted to go either theology or music school. So, while we were talking, I was actually trying to tell him my interest is actually music. And he made a statement. He said, no, music is for riff raps. This was 2012. So, we grew up in a system where the perception of people was that anybody in that, hmm. along that line, they are idiots. You get it? I know, I will help you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. So, even in church, hmm. they just felt like, ah, is it not music? You get Over time, we've since discovered that. Um, that was not necessarily true. And that music is actually work, and not just work, an intensive one at that. Uh, you can you, say that. If you're, a, if you're a church musician, you know how you get home by 12 or 1 on Sundays and you crash. It has taken a toll on your system. Exactly, exactly. Uh, it's not it's a huge and, sacrifice. That's number one. Number two, it takes a high level of intelligence yeah. to actually engage music. Exactly. Your memory, you miss one small thing. You cause problem for everybody. <laughs> you, you get one small detail goes wrong. So it takes a high level of intelligence uh, to actually then, more importantly, for the music to now be anointed. It actually means that you've been studying, you've been praying. So it's a whole lot of investment systems mm -hmm. that uh, people really did not understand way back. Uh, going forward, at the time we are now, if you are going to have, actually have an effective unit, uh, you don't, well, you, the best thing, it's just like Papa has said. Uh, reduce the stress that you will have. Yeah. No, really. Reduce. You will cut down a lot of stress if you cut down, if you have a stringent system of recruitment. For God's sake, 
if you're going to recruit to a Fortune 500 company, will you recruit just anybody? Exactly. So how much more the people that serve in God's throne room? Hmm. It's just simple math. That leads in. We are not, if um, we are, you're going to employ people into an NPC and there's some certain level of skill, there's some certain level of awareness and a lot of technical know-how that they must bring on board, uh, then it's a no-brainer that in God's house, uh, these things should actually Excellent. be there. Please, can we celebrate, can we celebrate uh, Minister Paul? Okay. Then I will just add that, uh, you know, you talked about church administration. Exactly. Because if the administration is wrong, there's no effort the leader of the choir puts you like, what are they doing? Do you understand? Do you understand? So, I think if pastors will start to Thank see... Thank God he didn't say that to the mic. If church leaders will start to see these things from the way we are seeing it, so that it will now, once it, they change their mindset okay. about it, it will help the choir. Okay. Because a choir or a church that even everything you are singing is like we don't to them it's like you are just making noise. The drum is just making a big, big, big. Let me add an experience to what you said. I remember in my 300 level I was, I was privileged to be one of the people leading the class in my 300 level. And we're packing I was packing some, it was the time of um, this uh, mix amp. You know, how many of us remember mix amp? Uh -huh, mix amp. We're packing it for Riaza and Combo. We're, we're just packing it from one uh, auditorium to the other, from one. And one woman just met me. She was very sincere, very well meaning. Ah, brought to me. I, apologies to non Yoruba speaking, but I won't be able to express it without Yoruba. Your admission of I. We thank God, you are a shaman. Now, I, I got home. I had to, that word, that particular word kept echoing. The people into all this music thing, they are not making passing as a way of escape. And that is where the problem lies. Uh, please, uh, uh, Stephen and all, other choir, uh, TSC choir people, can you, uh, leaders, please, can you close your ears to all these things so that after this session you will not chase everybody out of the choir say, just on a lighter mode. But please, are we gaining knowledge? Are we gaining wisdom? Please, uh, because of the, uh, please, I don't know if you've written down any question, one that's called the, please, let's pass to the hushers so that we can attend to them now. Please, uh, within the little time that is left, please. So that yeah. we can enjoy the participation Perfect. of yeah. the members Sorry. of the group. Sorry, you okay. asked a question.